if we look at the definition of work, um, work equals Fs times cosine theta, that probably looks a little bit familiar in terms of some of the other quantities that we've come across. Um, for instance, the um, formula for torque is Rf sine theta. And there's a, a lot of similarities between um, formulas of these types. We have two quantities multiplied together with an angle also attached. So just like we had a shorthand for the torque formula, which was R cross F, um, and that cross encoded the sine theta, it encoded some information about direction and so on. Um, we also have a shorthand for the type of relationship that goes into creating work. So we can write work as F dot S. Okay, so um, what does that mean? Well, the dot product, as we call this, encodes the cosine theta. Okay, so just like the cross product encoded the sine theta, the dot product is a new type of product that is uh, a, a way to combine two vector quantities. Okay, we think of this as a product, but again, it's not really multiplying in the same sense that um, you know, scalar multiplication is. Um, one big difference between dot products and cross products is that dot products are scalars where cross products were vectors. So that's a, a pretty big difference. Um, if we want to come up with a geometric interpretation for what's going on when we take a dot product, let's say that we have F and S. Well, um, if we consider the situation um, work equals fs cosine theta, we can combine s and cosine theta into one quantity. Okay, so if I draw a right triangle like this, where we have an angle theta over here, then this side is s cosine theta. All right, so we can actually think of this as being equal to the force times s parallel. Um, the parallel component of S um, to F. Whatever direction F is in, we want to know how much of S is in the same direction. We can also associate the cosine with the force. So we could think of this as F parallel times the total displacement. So what component of the force is in the direction that the object is moving? Um, finally, there is also a formula based on the components that we can use. So what that looks like is work is Fx, Sx, plus Fy, Sy, plus Fz, Sz. So we can just add together each of the components multiplied together. Okay, again, um, notice that this comes out to a scalar, not a vector. Okay, so we're just adding together the products of those components. Okay, um, if we get a negative dot product, then it just means that when I draw a triangle, like the one that I drew here, um, the component of S that's parallel to F is pointing in the opposite direction. Okay, so um, the parallel component could either be positive, negative, or zero. One interesting property of dot products, um, which you know dot products show up in a lot of different places, is that um, the order doesn't matter. So if we notice, um, taking a dot product of A and B, we actually get the same thing as if we take the dot product of B and A. All right, so this is different than what we had with cross products. With cross products, if you switch the order, you got a different result. Um, with dot products, we're allowed to switch the order and we get the exact same thing. Another really interesting property of dot products is that they're independent of the coordinate system. So if I choose x, y axes to be you know, horizontal and vertical, and someone else chooses x, y axes that are along a ramp and perpendicular to a ramp, once we calculate a dot product, we're going to get the same answer. So somehow, going through this procedure where you add up the components in this way, um, any change of coordinate system doesn't affect the result at the end, which is really nice. Since the dot product doesn't have a direction, we kind of want it to be the same no matter how we set up our coordinate system.